नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एन डॉक्टर रवि जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वोमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग विद डेटोफाइटोक्सिस दिस इज अरीज ऑफ डेमेटोलॉजिकल डिजीजेस और डेमेटोलॉजी विच इन से we are discussing various diseases of dermatology in today's section we are going to discuss about dermatophytosis or in common term it is known as the ringworm <coughs> dermatophytes are the fungi that infects the skin hairs and nails it includes members of genera trichophyton microsporon and epidermophyton the typical infection consists of erythematous scaly plaques with an annular appearances that accounts for common name ringworm with central clearing and scale along the peripheral advancing border this is the ringworm they can originate from soil animals or can be confined to human skin if they are originating from the soil it is known as geophilic if arising from the animals it is known as zoophilic and if they are confined to the human skin it is known as anthropophilic the lesions start as papules and spreads in a ring like form peripherally with the central clearing the lesions are characteristically circular with sharply defined active and raised edges consisting of vesicles and scalae a single lesion occurs and thereby multiple plaques may coalesce into larger lesions the central skin of the lesions show post inflammatory pigmentation changes of texture or residual erythematous dermal nodules there is great itching present but individual characteristic features depend on the type of lesion it can involve any area of the body due to the infection of stratum corneum nail plate or hair the common sites include the scalp it is known as tinea capitis involvement of the body that is known as tinea corporis groin region tinea crudis palm tinea manum foot tinea pedis and nails that is known as tinea unguium or onychomycosis tinea corporis the lesions are erythematous annular and scaly with well defined edge and often central clearing it can be single to multiple and usually asymmetrical the inflammation depends on the causative fungus and the host immunity microsporum canis from dogs and trichophyton varicosum from cats are common causes next we come to tinea crudis it is caused by trichophyton rubrum the most common worldwide infection more in males than in females it affects the groin region itchy erythematous plaques extend from the groin flexures into the thighs next we come to tinea manum it is caused by trichophyton rubrum it is unilateral involvement of the palm which becomes dry and hyperkeratotic with mild scaling around the palmar creases next we have tinea pedis that is the athlete's foot it is caused by trichophyton rubrum trichophyton mentegrophytes and epidermophyton plocosum it is characterized by variable erythema edema scaling pruritus and occasionally vesiculation there is itchy rash between the toes with peeling fissuring and maceration of the skin there is involvement of one sole or palm with a fine scaling that is characteristic of trichophyton rubrum infection vesiculation of the frank blisters is commonly more commonly seen with trichophyton mentegrophytes tinea unguium or onychomycosis it is characterized by opacified thickened nails and subungual debris 
yellow brown discoloration and crumbling of the plate which starts distally and spreads proximally. More commonly toenails, the distal lateral variance is more common. Proximal sarangual onychomycosis is a marker of HIV infection or other immunocompromised states. Next we have tinea cupatus. It is caused by trichophyton transurance, non-inflammatory infection with mild scales and hair loss that is diffuse or localized. Markedly inflammatory dermatosis with edema and nodules, later presentation is a carry-on. Tinea incognito, it is disguising and worsening the signs due to inadvertent topical corticosteroids application. Now we come to the diagnosis. The diagnosis is done by skin scraping and nail clippings by culture or direct microscopic examination. Hyphae are often seen on the KOH preparations. Tinea capitis and tinea corporis may require culture and biopsy. Next we have the management. Management depends on the affected site and the type of infection. Topical imidazoles, triazoles, and allylamines may be effective. Resiofuel will 500 mg per day if systemic therapy is required. Hydroconazole or terabinafine may be effective for nail infections. <clears throat> Next, we come to tinea versicular. Tinea versicular is a non dermatophytic. Dimorphic fungus, Malassezia furfur, a normal inhabitant of the skin. The infection is promoted by the heat and humidity. The typical lesion consists of oval scaly macules, papules, and patches concentrated on the chest, shoulders, and back. It is rarely on the face or on the distal extremities. On the dark skin, the lesions often appear as hypopigmented areas. On the light skin, they are slightly erythematous or hyperpigmented. The diagnosis of tinea versicular is done by KOH preparations. From the scaling lesions, will demonstrate confluent or short hyphae and round spores that are spaghetti and meatball appearance. Now the management of tinea versicular consists of lotions or shampoos containing sulfur, salicylic acid or selenium sulfide. A very short course of ketoconazole has been used as have itoconazole and fluconazole. Homeopathic management consists of arsenic album, bacillinum, calcarea carb, chrysorbinum, dalcamara, graphitis, Phytolica decandra, Sorinum, Sepia, Spongia tosta, Sulphur, Tila erenia, and Terylvium. So this was all about tinea infections and also tinea versicular. In the next lecture, we are going to start with the Candidiasis. This session was powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya P. Poments University. I hope you are satisfied with my digital session. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. This was all for today. Thank you very much. We will be meeting in the next lecture tomorrow.